Hi there. I'm pretty excited for this video because I get to announce some new open source software. We've implemented a scatter widget inside of the draw data library, which will allow you to draw a data set from Jupyter in a very nice way. So let's go with a quick demo. Um, I've declared a scatter widget variable here. And when I evaluate it in a Jupyter cell, you see that it gets rendered. Let's uh, focus in on it. Um, what you see here is basically a drawing palette. Um, if I click my mouse, you can see that I can draw some points. And notice that every time I draw, uh, the number counts here uh, update. Uh, I can also select a different class. And you'll notice that when I do that, uh, I have a different color that I'm drawing. And also note, by the way, that I'm able to reduce the brush size. So uh, I could have like a very thin line if I wanted to. But alternatively, uh, I can also make it very thick and uh, really make it a wide scatter, so to say. If I make a drawing and I make a mistake, uh, then I'm able to uh, undo my last action. Every time I uh, release the mouse cursor, that's considered a separate batch, and I'm always able to uh, undo that. But uh, something that's really nice about the way that this widget is implemented is that uh, because it's a proper uh, Jupyter widget, um, this widget variable uh, also contains properties like the data that I just drew. And this is a list of every data point that I've just drawn. Um, each data point in particular will have an X coordinate, a Y coordinate, a color, uh, which is the color that I'm using to draw here, uh, and the label that's attached to it. And this is data that you can use for whatever purpose you feel like. Um, for convenience, uh, we've also added a data as pandas property to uh, get this data in a pandas data frame. But we also support polars. So you can also get this into uh, a polars data frame uh, instead. Now, just this on its own is pretty nice and pretty useful. But this is only the beginning of what this widget can do. You see, because this is a Jupyter widget, we also have access to sort of a event system. And theoretically, what you can imagine is that uh, I have this one widget. Uh, let's call that widget one. And what I could do is I could say, well, every time that uh, this widget is done drawing, whenever there's been a change to the internal data, then it can be used to trigger an update to another widget. And you can kind of get in this reactive workflow uh, from your notebook by doing this. When you make an update to your drawing, then you can trigger something else happening in your notebook as well. And that can be very cool for some educational purposes. And I also want to give a quick demo of this. So to demo that, uh, I wrote up a little bit of code over here. And before running it, uh, I do think it would be good to just explain some of the things that I'm doing here. So at the start, um, I'm starting up my widget, uh, just like before. But I'm also declaring an output object uh, from the IPython widgets library. Simply put, uh, this represents just a place where I can uh, put some output into. I have a function over here that I'll get to in a bit, but uh, these two objects are being reused below here. And you'll notice that I have a widget.observe method over here. The way to read this is that every time this data property is updated inside of this widget, then this one Python function will trigger. That's the function written over here. Internally, this function is going to uh, calculate some things. But you'll notice that this output over here is able to capture the output of this function. And that means that every time that this widget updates, this function will run, this output will update. And I have my final widget at the bottom over here that just shows me the original scatter widget as well as the output. We're going to see what that looks like in just a bit. But what is this function doing internally? Well, it's looking at the pandas data that the widget has. So data as pandas is what I'm using here that gives me this data frame. And then if that data frame has data in it, and if there are two classes in it at least, then I'm going to train a machine learning model. In particular, um, I'm going to train a logistic regression model over here. Uh, I'm going to. Uh, take the x and y column that gives me this x matrix, um, the color variable, that's what I'm using over here as my y. And that'll give me a trained classifier. From there, um, there is this utility inside of scikit-learn called a decision boundary display. Effectively, that'll give me a matplotlib chart of what the machine learning model thinks the predictions should be of the data set that I'm drawing in my scatter widget. 
Now, I hope that uh, by explaining this, you also feel empowered to uh, write something like this yourself. But uh, let's now just run this and see what happens. All right. Um, so I'm just going to draw some data points for class A. So far, so good. But now I'm going to draw some data points for a second class. It took a brief second there, but you'll notice that after a bit, uh, this chart over here appears. You can see the blue dots that I've drawn, as well as the orange ones. And you can also see this decision boundary over here. So let's draw some more points. You can definitely see that as I'm drawing that there's an update. But what I can also do is uh, make it just slightly harder for the logistic regression to uh, make a prediction. So the logistic regression is really trying its best to uh, find some sort of separating plane in this space, but it can't because uh, the data set isn't uh, separable. So uh, to maybe make it a little bit easier there, uh, one thing I can also do is just uh, take a decision tree classifier instead. So I'm going to replace the logistic regression with a uh, tree-based model. And now if I were to draw something that's uh, maybe a little bit harder, um, then you see that the tree model is actually uh, pretty good, uh, also because I'm drawing a relatively simple data set. But you can see that the tree model is uh, much better at making this classification. And this will hold true if I draw some more data as well. So there's lots of cool stuff that you can actually do with this. Because this is a proper uh, Jupyter widget, uh, you can actually make use of this observe feature and update other widgets as you're drawing. And definitely for educational purposes, I can see a lot of benefit in being able to draw your own data set and then to see if your model can uh, understand it well. However, this is also just one idea that I'm exploring here. Uh, in general, I hope that there's lots of cool things that you could do uh, when you're able to draw a data set inside of Jupyter. So in a way, this is really just uh, the beginning of something, but it is a very useful feature that I'm excited to get out there. So I hope that you're going to give this new Draw Data Widget a spin, but before wrapping up this video, I did want to give a shout out to the Any Widget project, uh, which is what I have been using under the hood. There's a lot of things to like about the library. You do need to know a little bit of JavaScript, but it does feel like you only need to know enough. It doesn't require you to know too much of it. But one of the things that Any Widget also provides that's definitely likable is that if you get your widget to work in Any Widget, it also works in lots of notebook environments. So that means that it will work inside of Jupyter, but it will also work inside of the notebook environment inside of VS Code. And it will also work in Colab. And this is a concern that Any Widget is taken care of on my behalf. So if you want to make your own custom widgets, uh, definitely uh, give this any widget library a try. It's been uh, a good experience on my part. But if you're interested in drawing data, know that the widget that you see uh, on the left over here, uh, that's now available in the draw data library. And uh, I'm super eager to see what people do with it.